the powers that be the ptb the industry whatever you want to call them once they're done with diddy right and um this is going to be going on for some time but once i guess you can say the public humiliation basically after the major documentaries come out right after they are done with Diddy, Jay-Z is up next to be exposed. Y'all, it looks like things are heating up in the Carter household because word on the street is that Bianca and Jay-Z are finito. They are headed for divorce. Can you even imagine? The streets are saying that things have been tense between them for a hot minute, and they have been separate for a while. They've chosen to keep it private and keep up the appearance of a healthy marriage, but it looks like Queen Babe might be making some heavy moves to protect herself. Word on the street is that Jay-Z's allegedly being lined up by the Hollywood elites to get exposed, like his bestie Diddy. I mean, we've already seen that happen to his former Rock Nation artist, Maya, who came out to expose his connection to the Bronfman family, who have been linked to some very shady practices. It looks like Jay-Z might be crashing and burning, and Bayonke is not about to crash with him, so she is allegedly dumping him and saving herself. All come on in the room because it's tea time. It's absolutely crazy. It's got to be the worst day of the history. Jay-Z and Beyonce are getting a divorce. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Beyonce and Jay-Z are getting a divorce. Is she crazy? I would never leave that man for no billion dollars. I don't give a damn what the hell he did. Is she crazy? Okay, so y'all go ahead and have a seat because reports have it that Bianca and Jay-Z are allegedly heading to divorce court. Bianca is reportedly done with the marriage and wants out. This is very surprising though, considering that Jay-Z centered his entire Grammy speech around Bianca and how the Recording Academy has been doing her dirty for her entire solo career. Bianca has been nominated four times for Album of the Year, which is the biggest Grammy award, but she's never won. There were high hopes that she was going to win last year for Renaissance, but unfortunately, she didn't win. Harry Styles won for his Harry's House album, and he got dried for filth because fans felt like Renaissance was the better album. Y'all, Jay-Z was so upset about it that he gave an interview on Tidal. Now, Tidal is Jay-Z's brand, so him getting the interview just shows how badly he wanted that word to get out. He made some solid points about why Bayonke deserved to win Album of the Year, saying, look what it's done to the culture. Look how the energy of the world moved. They played a whole album in the club. Every remix is amazing. Everyone's inspired. It has inspired the world. It's inspiring creativity. When it just inspires creativity, that's an album that has to be Album of the Year. Has to be. But he didn't slam the Grammys for being biased toward Bayonke, saying, the truth is we grew up wanting to be on the Grammys, and it was all good. We just want them to get it right. That's what we want. Obviously, it's music and it's all subjective, but you've got to be in the ballpark. That's all we want. We just want them to get it right because we love it so much. We grew up watching Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder won three out of four years in a row. Yeah, he seemed to be very upset about that last year, but it's been a whole year, and people thought that he might have gotten over it already. I mean, Bianca did become the most awarded artist in the history of the Grammys, so they had something to celebrate. However, Jay-Z was clearly holding a grudge because when he was honored with the Global Icon Award at the Grammys last week, he brought up the issue again and called out the Academy for being biased towards his wife, whom he claimed he did not want to embarrass. Music and his opinion base. But, you know, some things, you know, I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. Think about that. The most Grammys never won album of the year. That doesn't work. Fans definitely had mixed feelings about this. A lot of people felt like Jay-Z was being greedy by complaining about Bamke not having album of the year when she already has 32 Grammys way more than anybody in history. Some people felt like he should be grateful for what Bianca has managed to achieve instead of crying about what she hadn't achieved. On the other hand, there were a lot of people who found it very sweet that Jay-Z would stand up for his wife like that. The fact that he was speaking up for her more than a year later showed that he truly cared about her and the things that mattered to her. Plus, 
The fact that he chose to focus on her instead of himself during his moment to shine was very sweet to see. However, as it turns out, there might have been another reason for Jay-Z speaking up for her. The streets are saying that it was a last-ditch effort for him to win Bayonke okay back because allegedly they have been separated for a while now. Allegedly, they have been living separately and have chosen to put up a front in public as a married couple, kind of like Will and Jada Smith have been doing since 2016 before Jada made the announcement last year. This claim was made by blogger Storm Monroe, who claimed to have some insider details about this, claiming that the powerful couple might be heading for divorce because Bam K allegedly plans to take the separation forward and divorce Jay-Z. The powers that be, the PTB, the industry, whatever you want to call them, once they're done with Diddy, right? And um, this is going to be going on for some time, but once, I guess you can say the public humiliation, basically after the major documentaries come out, right? After they are done with Diddy, Jay-Z is up next to be exposed. Now, while well, some members of the Beehive are happy to hear about this because they've been begging Bayonke to dump Jay-Z for years and move on with her life. Even if the Beehive has been asking Bayonke for years to leave him, it all got worse after she revealed that he admitted to cheating on her with a woman known as Becky with the good hair. But Bayonke chose to stick by her man and stay beside him through all that, only for her to now file for divorce. Yeah, there's something going on here because she has stuck with him through thick and thin. I mean, for years she has had to deal with people talking about their age difference and how he could have manipulated her into the marriage. Whenever people dive into Bayonke and Jay-Z's relationship, one thing that always pops up is their pretty big age difference. Bayonke, born on December 4th, 1981, is 42 now. Jay-Z, who was born in 1969, is 53, making him a whopping 13 years older. While a 13-year age gap isn't exactly unheard of in many relationships, the twist here is that they first crossed paths when Bayonke was 18 years old and Jay-Z was a seasoned 31-year-old. Now, when you're both in your 40s and up, the age gap might not raise too many eyebrows, but an 18-year-old being with a 30-year-old is a little bit weird. What makes it even weirder is how Jay-Z describes their first encounter in his 2018 track on the album Everything Is Love in the song 713, where he said, We played it cool at the pool of Cancun, VMA. Confidence you exude makes the fool stay away. Me, I played the room, let the fools have their say. Fate had me sitting next to you on the plane, and I knew straight away. Now this whole age gap saga hasn't escaped the scrutiny of fans. In the online chatter, some folks have been wondering if Jay-Z might have overstepped some boundaries when he made moose on Bayonke back then because she was still a teenager. This has become a hot topic, sparking debates and raising questions about how it all went down. Well, let's take a trip down memory lane, shall we? They started dating in 2001, but they kept things hush-hush until 2004 when they finally stepped out together at the 2004 MTV Video Music Awards. By then, they had already dropped a couple of tracks as a duo like Crazy in Love, which won them a Grammy in 2004. While the music was making waves and selling smoothly, the love story was not that smooth. Rumors swirled that Jay-Z was playing the field with other women at the beginning of their relationship, cheating on Bayonke. It was one of those on-again, off-again sabas that had everybody guessing. Bayonke even hinted at the drama in her 2006 song, Resentment, where she said, Loving you is easy once upon a time, but now my suspicions of you have multiplied, and it's all because you lied. Yeah, that was a pretty clear sign that things weren't all sunshine and rainbows. But later on in the song, she laid it out plainly and said, I know she was attractive, but I was here first, been writing with you for six whole years. Translation, there were definitely some infidelity issues brewing in the early days of being taste romance. But they powered through. Back in 2008, Bayonke and Jay-Z decided to take the plunge and tie the knot in a ceremony right in Jay-Z's penthouse. It wasn't your typical wedding affair, though. Along with exchanging rings, they took things up a notch by getting matching tattoos of their favorite number, four, on their ring fingers. Why four? Well, it's because their wedding date was April 4, 2008. Bayonke's birthday falls on September 4, and Jay's on December 4. Let's not forget Jay's album titled, 444, and their daughter Blue Ivy's name, Ivy for Roman numerals. So yeah, little did they know that 4 Tattoo would become a symbol of the roller coaster right ahead in their marriage.
Well, six years into their marriage, the Carters found themselves at the center of one of the internet's juiciest scandals. But y'all let me know what y'all feel about the situation and then check out this next video.